the first time I did it, I thought the churches will kill me, you know, I'm showing God. You know? But uh, many people told me that this was uh, a kind of uh, seeing the feelings of God, how God was loving so much this earth. Hallo und herzlich willkommen bei Bibel TV, das Gespräch. In allen möglichen Sprachen wird Gott verkündet. In so viele wurde die Bibel übersetzt und in allen möglichen Kulturen drücken Menschen ihren Glauben aus. Meist geschieht das über das Wort, über das Sprechen. Es geht aber auch anders. Unser heutiger Gast hat es zu großer Kunst gebracht, von seinem Glauben mit der Mimik zu sprechen. Er ist Pantomime und kommt, um über das Wort Gottes zu sprechen, ganz ohne Worte. Das könnten wir natürlich, und das ergänze ich gleich sofort, das könnten wir natürlich versuchen ohne Worte, aber ich bin so gut in Pantomime und deswegen tun wir das natürlich in einer Sprache, wir tun es in Englisch. Sie werden das übersetzt hören, aber nicht, dass Sie sich wundern, dass ich jetzt auf Englisch umschalte. Herzlich willkommen, Carlos Martinez. Thank you very much. Let's start with two dreams which you had when you were a child. You were imagining some things you were dreaming of you would do in future. What was it in detail? Well, um My first dream was to speak all languages of the world. And as a child, I thought that there were only six because, you know, the, the kids had no so big imagination or, well, big imagination, but not big information. And I thought, yeah, there will be six languages, so it cannot be difficult. And six is a big number already for kids, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it was interesting that it was my father, the one who said, uh, it's impossible, you know, because there are, there are many languages. And I thought, but there are only six. And he said, no, there are 6,000. So the parents are good to show us the reality. And uh, this was the first time that I, I realized that my dream was broken, was destroyed. So my father was right. It's impossible to speak all languages of the world. So that was one part. You yeah. were dreaming of speaking all the languages. Yes. What, was, what was the other one? To be an actor. That came very quickly to yes. your mind already. Yes, uh, as, as, a well. child, as a child, um, it was a famous actor on television that was living near in my village or perhaps not in my was very child. If he's not in my village very near, And I saw him on television, uh, you know, Sundays, And I don't know. He was so fascinated. And then in the more, uh, next day, he was coming almost close to my home. So I said, I want to be an actor as ah, well. Okay, okay. I don't know. I like it to tell stories. I, I was a storyteller already as a child. But then once again, it is uh, interesting why you turned to become a, a mime. Yeah. Why did you switch to that? Silent language. Um, I, I was studying theater because I wanted to be an actor already in Barcelona. And there I discovered the art of mime. I never thought of pantomima, mime. I didn't know this as a child, you know. And what, yeah. uh, but there in the school I had to learn this, uh, part of the education. And there I discovered that, ah, with mime I can be an actor. And at the same time, I can speak all languages of the world. So uh, mime, thanks to mime, I saw that two dreams um, made reality. So this is why mime for me is not only a, a profession, it's part of my dream. Would you say it works uh, everywhere, like in China or in Congo or in <laughs> El Salvador as much as in... Belgium. Well, in El Salvador, at least I could speak Spanish <laughs> if they don't understand. I mean, I was in China. I, I did two tours in China and they understood. Of course, they came. They didn't know what was pantomima. Um, so all the Chinese came with the, uh, the telephone, you know, to record. And it was funny to see them recording and looking somewhere else. <laughs> And then somebody had to stop them and to say, no, 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 no. This is not for your camera. This is for your eyes. And you could see all the Chinese you know, putting down the camera and observing and to see them 
laughing. The Chinese <laughs> laughing. This was beautiful, beautiful. Um, but as I said, uh, I had many, uh, um, many people from many countries laughing at the same time. Uh, so I imagine that it's not only because it's pantomima, it's because my stories are very human. And then the people can see themselves. So actually that is a, is a, is a part of an answer already. But because you're saying your, your stories are very human, so yeah. it's a human language. But would you say, on the other hand, there are some things which you, where you could make a mistake in, in mime, like which could be misunderstanding? Always, because it's like it happens with the language as well. It happens with, uh, for, for example, every time I play a candle, you know, in Pantomima, I take a candle, I take the matches, I, you know, and, and I put the candle. If I do this, almost everywhere they understand that it's a candle. But in China, a candle is something Buddhist. If I am in Spain and they see a candle, they think that somebody died. Uh, in other countries, it could be that is the birthday, the first <laughs> birthday of uh, somebody, a child. Um, other people think that the light went off and then they need a candle. So everybody sees the candle, which is already my work, but the interpretation of the situation because of the candle, this depends on that. I think this is why it's not just mime, it's the art of mime, because art is, goes really beyond, it's really much more than the candle, much more than the, the object, let's say. It's very interesting because also it leads us already to the uh, religious part of uh -huh. your work, which is, a, which is an important uh, part. So I can imagine talking about God and verses of the Bible, uh, will lead to lots of possibilities of interpretation as well. Yes. But before we come to this, just a short other question before. How long does it take for you to, to, yeah, well, to put a story into your art? How long do you have to practice? Uh, depending on the, on the story, I, I created a show about water. And this show was 45 minutes. This took four years four years to show 45 minutes, you know. Um, when it's only one piece of four minutes, three minutes, five minutes, this could be three months, uh, each one, because there are so many details. It's what you said about misinterpretation, you know. If I do a little mistake, then the people don't follow the story and then the people are lost, you know. In, in my view, you need the, con the full concentration of the people. If, I, if there is a moment that is boring, the people disconnect. And if they disconnect, they, they lose the story. So to keep the attention of the people for three, four minutes, it has to be very well precise and rehearsed and try. Respect. Well, <laughs> right from the beginning, you started also playing pieces inspired by the Bible. Why was that? Well, was it the fascination of the Bible in general, yes. or you were a believer and you thought, <laughs> "Oh, I want to express something"? 
Um, no, I always was fascinated by the Bible. Um, my mom said uh, sometimes in the morning, said, Carlos, where is my Bible? Uh, I like it so much, this expression, my Bible. This is why my show, I have a show dedicated entirely to the Bible. And this show is called My Bible. And uh, some theologians told me, Carlos, it cannot be. It has to be the Bible. And I said, yeah, but my mom said, where is my Bible? So perhaps, I mean, she was not a theologian, but she said something truly, you know, that this is my Bible. This is the, the one that if I want to find a, a biblical verse, it's very easy for me. I know my Bible. If you give me a new one, it takes longer to find this part of the Bible. And I thought, yes, one day I have to do something in, in honor, in homage to my mom, you know. And uh, I learned um, stories from the Bible from my mom. I didn't read so much as a child the Bible, but I knew the stories from the Bible because of her. And if it is about your Bible, what would be the favorite stories of your Bible? I cannot say the favorite, but it was the one that was very special for me to play, is to show God creating the earth. Um, this was in a um, kind of a, with children in one church, and then I asked them, tell me one biblical character and I play for you. And one child who didn't know so much from the Bible, he said, uh, can you play God? And <laughs> of course, the first reaction is to say no, but you cannot say no to a child. So I said, okay, yes. <laughs> then I, I did something like God creating the earth. This is a principle in pantomime, a principle in mime, that if you want to play a character, you need an object. So when you think of God, you don't think of an object. But when God was creating, ah, it was an object there. Is the earth there? And then I started to do this, and uh, it was only 20 seconds for the child, and he liked it very much. And I thought, I could do this little improvisation to make it the whole piece of four minutes. And the first time I did it, I thought the churches will kill me, you know? I'm showing God. You know? But uh, many people told me that this was uh, a kind of uh, seeing the feelings of God, how God was loving so much this earth and to, to transport the feelings of God in that peace with respect, um, with humor. Oh, this touch my, still now, I, I did that more than 700 times, this piece, but it still is touching me so much. It reminds me of something which you said, um, that the Bible is, how would you say, it? you call the Bible a mirror. Mirror, yes. Um, is it connected to that, that you, like, um, you show something which is um, a reflection of people thinking about God? Yes, and, uh, you know, Shakespeare said that uh, the actors on the stage, we have to be a kind of a mirror of nature, you know, where the people can see themselves. Uh, but at the same time, the actors, we can see ourselves reflected in the audience. How the people react, we know how it's going and how th my feelings are going. I, r I remember once playing God creating the earth, um, that it was a moment when Adam and Eve in the story I was creating, um, encounter with the sin, you know, when it comes to this the tragedy in the, in the story of the creation. And uh, I remember that when I saw this as Carlos, I thought, 
oh no, I am going to destroy the earth. I don't know if God had this feeling, but me as Carlos, I thought it, it, it cannot be. They are destroying my creation. And then it was a moment that I wanted to destroy the, 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 the earth. And then I look at the audience. I have never done this. I just, I don't know why. I look at the audience and I saw the faces of the people looking like, please don't do it. Otherwise you kill us. So it's, so it's a dialogue as well between yes. audience and you. Yes. And, and does it happen more often that you change your program then? Meanwhile, when you, when you receive a reaction that you change some of your gestures? Yes, I can. I can do it because all my pieces I, are done for me. I create the pieces for me. Um, so I'm not, I don't take the piece from somebody else. I take my own piece. And then this piece, I can make it shorter, longer, funny, more serious depending on the people. So if you perform um, biblical stories, um, what is your intention actually? Why do you do this? What do you want the people to understand? Um, the, the main thing is that the people can see that the Bible is not so far away from us, from our normal life. When I play Noah <laughs> and the ark, building the ark, uh, the people see that Noah is so close to us, or we are so close to Noah, um, to, to see how the animals were entering in the ark. It must be funny sometimes, you know? To see Abraham bringing the, his son to the sacrifice, you know, this must be so dramatic. And when the people see my piece about Abraham, they say, uh, oof, I don't know the story, but I can see that you are a father. I see the suffering. So it's to bring the Bible closer to us. Um, and to see that we are also part of Noah, part of Abraham, part of Esther, part of Mary, that we are not so far from them. Would, would you say there are people who come to your place when you, when, when you perform biblical issues who are believers already, or are there people who are just curious and afterwards they are so curious that they would <laughs> like to become uh, believers? Yeah, it's true. Um, so some people come to the theater because of the theater. They don't care who is performing the topic. They come to the theater. Some people come because they like mime. Some people come, few people come because they know me. But some people come because of the topic. I mean, I have a show about human rights and some people don't like pantomima, but they come because they like human rights. Um, so some people come because they like the topic of Bible or because they saw me performing human rights and they think it was, he was able to play human rights. How can he do the Bible? Um, so some people come with curiosity. Some people don't have any idea about the Bible. But after the show, I always stay there and the people cannot come and ask questions. Uh, a woman told me, I didn't know the story of Abraham. And then she said, is it, is it true that this story is in the Bible? I said, yes, 
I mean, of course, without makeup, but yes, it's in the Bible. And then she said, <laughs> and then she said, um, when I am at home, I will check the Bible of my grandfather that I never opened just to find that story in the Bible. Um, I want to make the, the, the Bible more human to us. And uh, as I said, it's a kind of an homage to my mother. My mom always told me, remember, if you play one day the Bible in mime, don't forget to add humor. And in all my pieces, I see people laughing with Noah, laughing with God, laughing with Abraham, not laughing so much, but smiling with Abraham. Uh, and then I think of my mom because I am making the Bible a little bit closer to us, to human beings. Let's look at God as Trinity, as yes. Holy Trinity. So you told us a little how you would create or reflect or show God as the creator. What would you say about Jesus? How would you show him? Yes, I mean, again, we always look for objects. Uh, when the people ask me, can you play Jesus? I always play the Last Supper. I love the Last Supper. Um, Why is that so important? Uh, yeah, because I, I was in the, an ecumenical uh, congress, I think it's uh, something like Kirchentag or something like this in Germany, and I was invited there and, um, to perform, and they asked me to perform the Last Supper, and I said, why the Last Supper? And he said, they said, because this is one of the most difficult topics to be together, the Last Supper. And when you do it in pantomima, there is nothing. So everyone can see what they want, you know? And then I, I prepared this piece where Jesus is uh, breaking the, the bread, is serving the, the wine, and this moment is so special to see how the bread goes, how the wine goes, but you don't see anything. It's your imagination, and each one can see the bread they want, the wine they want. So I guess it's even harder to show the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> the Holy Spirit, I think it's, um, it's, I don't show the Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit, you see it already through the performance. Um, in one way, there are not many parts in the Bible where you see the Holy Spirit visible, except this uh, daff, you know, or, but you don't see so much uh, personalized the, the Holy Spirit, but you see the presence. Um, I was in a, in a um, conference and everything was so fluent, you know, everything well organized. And uh, I, I, was, I just was one guest there and somebody told me, did you see how the Holy Spirit was making everything so fluent? And then uh, a technician came and said, if you want, I can show you the whole Holy Spirit, because we were 12 people behind, making everything that was fluent. Um, I'm sure the Holy Spirit was using these 12 technicians to make it possible, like in the TV studio, you know, that you think, oh, it was so fluent. Yeah, but there are many people behind making this work. And uh, why not to think that is the Holy Spirit? I was so curious to ask this because I had I wanted to know what your idea of God is, how you would show him or her yeah. or whatever. So you gave us these three images. If, I don't know whether I may ask you, is there the possibility just to the end that you could show us with a gesture God? Well, I will, I cannot do one gesture, you know. For example, if uh, you want to say truth, you can say it in one second. But if I want to show truth, I need five minutes. Um, it's the same like, I think, a painter, you know. Perhaps uh, it's easier to say love 
than to paint love. To paint love, perhaps you need hours, you know, in one little painting. So it's the same. But what I can say is that for me, God is always looking down. When we think of God, we always look up. But when God is thinking of us, is uh, looking down. With care. And this is uh, what I like of changing the perspective. Um, to look at the cross in front is one thing. To look at the cross from down is one thing. But to look at the cross from the top is a completely different thing. And I think this is what artists have to do, to bring another perspective to the reality that we know. Wonderful. The last sentence was great. The, the idea to try to understand how God would look on, on yeah. that cru crucifixion. Well, that made me thinking. I hope that our audience, um, you have the same effect to our audience, I'm very sure about this. It made me curious to see some of the pieces you are doing in, yeah. in your performances. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with Our us pleasure. today. Thank you. Liebe Zuschauer, auch Ihnen ein herzliches Dankeschön für Ihr Interesse an der heutigen Sendung. Hoffentlich bis bald, wenn es wieder heißt Bibel TV, das Gespräch. Bis dahin machen Sie es gut. Tschüss.